maybe, and we will go to the public this time, although we are very short time. Um, I think the difference between labor conditions and your definition of slavery, uh, they would appear to me to be um, very near to one another. Where does, uh, where does slavery um, stop? And where uh, does very, very poor and very bad uh, working condition uh, start? Would you like maybe just quickly to comment on I, that? I'd love actually to know what you think. Um, you know, the, the definition of slavery that I put up about using people as you would use property, um, did that seem, I'm just really curious if it seemed reminiscent to you of the conditions, does that seem like a useful definition for the work that you do, the things that you see? Or not? Does it seem like a useful definition for the labour conditions that you see? The idea that people are property? Yeah, um, from our society we see that uh, uh, poor people who are working like a slave mm. uh, and the owners, they think that they are like their property right. and it's not fair. And no in your movement, are there ever times where you, where you use the word slave or slavery or slave-like uh, conditions or services? Uh, we issues? say uh, in our country when we look at uh, garment workers, we say they are modern, modern slaves mm. because they are, they are, they are not uh, uh, bound to uh, obey all order, but uh, their life is say that they're like a uh, modern slave. Like they're disposable. Yeah. yeah. Interesting, yeah. Mm -hmm. Maybe just also a question about um, the owners of the, of the factories. Sorry? The owners, who are the owners of these textile fa factories? I mean, we know the supply chain, we have a, we have a global uh, situation of um, us all participating, um, either as customers or as um, uh, parts of the production uh, process, um, which is very globalized and worldwide. Mm -hmm. But who are actually the local owners of the textile of the garment uh, companies? Are these um, are these Bangladeshi or the Indian? Um, before we um, would have all said most that of the owners are from Bangladesh mm -hmm. and. Some international uh, brands and buyers, they also come to Bangladesh uh, to get cheap labor. Mm -hmm. And these are not that much big in number. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, these owners, they are very uh, close to our government. And uh, in our parliament, uh, 30 members were from uh, government's owner last time from last parliament. Mm -hmm. So that is the situation. They can influence our politics very easily. Uh, so we can understand uh, through this that they are the member of parliament now. And after, and then we'll ask for questions, after um, what has happened, there was a large media coverage uh, here. Uh, has there been, has there been a discussion within parliamentary politics, um, what about the rights of um, working conditions? Is there a public debate on that uh, in Bangladesh or is it the protest and then when the protest stops then the debate stops? Or do you think that um, within politics, within um, the conditions of law that what has happened has uh, is going to change, or do we really just have to have the pressure from out with uh, After Rana Plaza collapse, I think uh, work many issues of garment workers uh, come in front of us, and there are many discussion in our country and internationally also. And uh, Rana Plaza collapse get attention from the whole world. Uh, but uh, uh, we thought uh, that after Rana Plaza collapse, we will get a new labor law uh, from our uh, owner or government. We will see the working condition will change or we will see uh, their wage uh, will increase. But uh, we get a new labor law, but we uh, haven't seen any change of uh, uh, cl clauses that will help workers life to change their working condition and their minimum wage. They earn only uh, 66 
uh, dollar per month. So it is so hard to survive. It is so easy to understand that nobody can survive through this $66. If we give it to the owner and say, please uh, spend this money in, your, in the month, I think it is a joke for them. They can spend uh, $66 within a few minutes. So these are the things going on. But after Rana Plaza collapse, we feel that uh, now our owner and international buyer, they are also uh, bound to think uh, about the working condition of workers. So many things is going on, many accord is uh, signing. Uh, they are talking about uh, workers' condition. A last question before we go to the public. Um, one of the big things we're trying to talk about in this uh, debate is, do you think that through the global market and the more world market society, that that is going to help conditions in Bangladesh? Are we going to see more the spotlight from outside um, and have an export of, um, of social security and cultural um, standards um, which would be imported into Bangladesh? Or do we see, because of the market competition, the opposite. Can we say that at all? It's very different and complex. But what would you be? What would be your impression? Um, garments is not a local industry. It's an international industry, and the European American uh, consumer they wear T-shirt and other clothes that made by Bangladeshi workers. So they also should be uh, more aware to change their condition. But uh, I also think and I want to give emphasis that uh, if uh, we want to change the workers' condition of our country, we need something different. Because maybe you know in our country, uh, there is no trade union right properly. So they cannot organize themselves. So it is very necessary to organize themselves and make protest movement against all kind of national and international uh, repression and uh, supply chain that exploited their life. So still they are not uh, getting scope to organize themselves. So it is also uh, important, I think. And international solidarity and international pressure also uh, will help it, I think. So would you like to comment from your... On the question of globalization and it's going slavery. To help slavery, is it going to... I mean, so far it, it hasn't. So far it's, it's been, um, slavery's been, it's sort of, it's underbelly, it's underside, a sort of side mm -hmm. effect of it. Um, but I think it can um, help, and, and I hope that initiatives like the um, International Cocoa Initiative, like the Rugmark Scheme um, in India, which has set up a system of inspections that now you can know that your carpets and rugs were not made by slaves, by um, child slaves, by labor slaves. I hope these initiatives might form an example. It's complicated because we've seen that there isn't an awful lot that actually individuals can do here. We've seen that individual consumer boycotts don't work that it's fun to stand outside Gap with a placard, you know, but it, it doesn't do anything. That in any T-shirt that Gap has, you know, 3% perhaps of its cotton might have come from um, slave labor. The rest of the T-shirt mm -hmm. hasn't. So you, you boycott that, you punish the farmers who aren't using slave labor, They're, they lose money, they're more likely to start using slave labor. It, what works we've seen is bringing industry together with the anti-slavery community, together with governments, and together with you know, the UN and the ILO and the EU, the US State Department, to come up with systems of inspection and labeling across their industry and actually ask industry to, to fund that, to put their money into it. Mm -hmm. So it, it could be, yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of untapped potential there, I guess. Yes, I, I do agree with her that uh, boycotting of clothes or buying clothes from our country is not the solution because it will uh, destroy our industry, destroy workers' lives. So, so it make things even maybe uh, worse. But yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so you have also been advising uh, the AU right. 
Uh, can you maybe just very quickly tell us something about that? What is the reaction in, in the EU? Do you think that the, there is a, uh, an, an adequate sensibility to the dimension of the problem? Not yet. Um, in being asked to consult with them on their anti-slavery policy, I was really excited that they wanted to talk about anti-slavery and not anti-trafficking. Mm -hmm. And this is the Human Rights Subcommittee of the European Parliament. Because until now, um, I have felt a little bit like the EU is maybe 10, 15 years behind other sort of big international organizations, including the UN, and to be honest, the, the US State Department, in not making that shift from only talking about trafficking to talking about trafficking and slavery together. Um, but, you know, in, in talking with them, there was an initial resistance, and I'm coming to understand that I, maybe it's to do with the history of slavery in Europe, it's to do with nations, you know, who had a part to play in the historic slave trade, not wanting to use that word even, and wanting to use the word trafficking as a sort of synonym, as a safer, sort of sanitized word maybe. Um, but when you explain to them that trafficking is, it would be as though in the 19th century, abolitionists only talked about the middle passage. They didn't talk about slavery once it was on plantations, that there's a big piece missing of their policy. Um, they're open to it. And so I'm hopeful that in talking to them about anti-slavery um, policies, w that their whole dialogue might shift over the coming five, ten years. Okay, thank you.